It's August. I never bought anything so fast. Let us need preview. Never seen one before. The Manchula Pothos. When will this get over? It's Mealybug. It reminds me of Cher and Fula's. Cheers. Hi everyone, it's Marianne. It's August and it's my favorite month because it is my birthday month and I got myself a little birthday present which is a new vlogging camera. This is the Canon PowerShot V10. I first saw this in Mikkel's video. She did a vlog in Hawaii using this camera. And let me tell you, I never bought anything so fast. Like I went straight to the Canon website, bought it right away after I saw her video because this Canon camera reminds me of the Vixia, which is the camera that a lot of YouTube vloggers used back then, but Canon, for some reason discontinued the Vixia and I always wanted one if you go to eBay right now they go for thousands of dollars but now they came out with the Canon PowerShot V10 and I believe this is a new release because when I went to the Canon website it says it's a new product and you can't find it in the refurbished section of the Canon website. All of my Canon cameras so far now that I have a lot I only have two are refurbished I never bought anything brand new. This is my first brand new Canon camera. I could probably have waited until the holidays to purchase this or waited another year so that I could get like a refurbished one but I really wanted it because like I said I was a big fan of the Canon Vixia and now is my chance to have one or something similar to the Vixia. So why do I need a third Canon camera when I already have two that I'm using? The one that I'm filming right now which is the Canon M50 and the G7X Mark III which is supposed to be my vlogging camera. Because this one is a lot more lightweight than the Canon G7X which makes it ideal for travel especially if you just have a small purse with you. It's not going to take up a huge space in your purse. It's also very discreet because it's so small and thin like it is the size of the palm of my hand and in comparison to the G7X it is also much smaller so i think this one is going to be a little bit more ideal for like travel vlogging or just vlogging when i'm outside so yesterday i took it with me while running errands to shoot a mini vlog so that i could test it out and review it for picture quality sound quality stability focus and battery life and all the things that i am really looking for for a vlogging camera so let's go watch my mini vlog to see how well it did and i'll be back at the end to give you like my final review of this camera hi so here it is recording and it is 19 millimeters so it is still very much wide angle as you can see and you get a sneak preview of my bedroom that i just redecorated my ficon my new fiddle fig but yeah i'm excited to use this for vlogging and for future videos Okay, so I'm walking my dog right now and I'm testing like the stability of this camera as well as the sound and picture looks great and so the one thing that I found out about this that I don't really like is it doesn't have a time-lapse function so that's kind of like a bummer I mean it's not like deal breaker or anything because I have other cameras to do time-lapse with but I kind of wish this one is a function for time-lapse but what I like about it so far is the autofocus, which is so much better than the G7X. And the amount of light it captures is really good. And how it has kind of like a built-in filter already, like it just makes your look good on camera without even like a lot of edits. So yeah, I love that around that, which is great for vlogging. So I don't always have to like color grade and everything. And yeah, because I think it is a 19 millimeter fixed lens, which I know might be a deterrent to some people. But I like it like that because it just captures better image than a kit lens type. I just went to Goodwill to drop off some stuff but unfortunately they weren't taking large pieces of furniture so I have to haul this back with me and I 
kind of really wanted to donate it because it's still in a good condition even though it's really old it just needs like sprucing up but they're not accepting it i could maybe try going to other goodwills or salvation army that might take it but honestly i don't have the time or energy to so unfortunately this might go to the bulk trash and right now i'm at walmart to return some pieces of clothing that i bought not gonna lie on impulse because they were like clothes that i wanted when i was a teenager but couldn't afford and now i can because you know like how everything 90s and early aughts are coming back you see them at walmart and target so i might have impulse buy and i didn't try them on while i was at walmart because i don't like trying clothes in stores i brought them home tried it on didn't really like them so i am going to return it and i'm gonna stop by lowe's to of course check out house plants and buy some more paint i'm currently in the process of turning my old bedroom into a home office so that is kind of like my new makeover series well i don't think it's going to be serious this is just going to be one episode after my backyard series and probably share with you some life updates then um because there are life updates and, and lastly i'm going to stop by starbucks because they're having a 50 percent off drinks today wednesday up until like next wednesday so i'm going to do that but yeah so let's go ahead and go to walmart this is what i used to wear in high school i originally was gonna pick this up because it reminds me of Cher and Kula's. Oh, I'm in. But I don't know. And they got the Halloween autumn stuff already. So this one is a skirt. I returned a skirt version of it, and this one's actually cheaper. But I kind of wish it was in black. Let's see if. Painter's tape is cheaper here than just getting one at the dollar store. This one's for three dollars. We'll all see if Lowe's has it. These blinds are always out of stock, so I'm getting some for the room as well. It took me forever to pick colors, but let's check on the house plants real quick. Tetrasperma, a syndapsis, a couple more pink princes, but not really variegated. I found a variegated lipstick plant. Never seen one before. But look at that. They have the Manchula pothos as well. Look how variegated that one is. Here's another one. It's for $7.98. Not bad since like I still see people selling this for like $30. And we also got the curly lipstick plant here. And here's another variegated lipstick plant. They have more pink princess over here and a little bit more manchula. And here they have global greens, larger leaves, better variegation than the previous ones I saw. Variegated peperomia, like Birkin, Burgundy rubber tree. I am seeing lots of manchulas. This one comes in a nice pot. Calatheus, ZZ Ravens, Golden Pothos. This one has huge leaves, but not as big as the one that I got from Trader Joe's. But this one seems like a little bit more variegated. A really nice pot of Marble Queen Pothos, almost Snow Queen Pothos like. More manchulas. Honestly, I'm tempted to get one because my mandrilla pothos is still suffering from thrips or mealybugs. 
Like this one is very variegated with huge leaves. I am very tempted. Like look at that one. Found in Arturias in the outdoor section. It's not doing well though, and it's like twenty dollars. So I just left Lowe's. I did get a paint sample of kind of like the sagey green that I want, but I wasn't really too sure. It took me like a long time to pick out this sample color. And I found like a terracotta-ish peach color that I was kind of going to try out in the clearance section. So I just got that instead of like picking out a paint sample for that too. And I saw that they had the blinds in stock that I've been like wanting to get. For a long time so i could like put blinds on all the windows in the bedroom or now home office so i got those and i quickly went to check out the house plant section because i'm already like running late it's like 2 40 so i need to get back but i went to check out the house plants real quick and i was surprised to see some stuff that they haven't had before like the variegated lipstick plant and the curly lipstick plant and they also had like a few pink princess philodendrons not very variegated not gonna lie and i saw they had like a few manjula pothos and i got bamboozled into buying one i got these and the reason i picked it out is because the manjula pothos that i had has been suffering from mealybugs since the beginning of the year and when I checked it this morning, it was still suffering from mealybugs. So I was kind of like, when will this get over its mealybugs? I actually, well, you will see in my Pothos collection video, I actually already trimmed it because if you remember from my last video in my backyard tour, it was like really, really trailing, really, really long. And I pruned it off just because the mealybug situation is not improving. But if it doesn't really improve at all, because it's August now, I am just probably going to give up that plant and just stick with this one and the reason that i also got this is because not only it's very variegated it also has really huge leaves and i kind of want to try just like with my golden pothos growing it up in a pole so we will see it is 7.98 so plants are getting expensive i know people are saying that the plant prices are going down but i feel like the garden center plants they're slowly creeping up in prices so like this one used to be just like five dollars something like this size of a plant but i mean there's a lot of plants in it so eight dollars was still kind of worth it but just a couple of years ago even during the height of like the plant collection obsession craze this was just like five dollars at a garden center so but i'm surprised to see mandula pothos because they always don't have mandula pothos and as i might have mentioned in like the clips earlier I still see people selling it for like $30 for just a couple of like cuttings. I'm gonna head to the dollar store, it might just be a montage, and then to Starbucks to get my 50% off drink, and then I'll see you in the end. They have the fall stuff out already. So I got the frozen pineapple passion fruit. I asked for strawberry toppings, but I don't think they put any. Yeah, so that's it for the vlog for today. I don't know how long this is going to record because the battery is already like flashing. So I'm not sure about the battery life on this one, but we'll see how the vlog turns out and let me know what you think of this new vlogging camera. Cheers. So here's my final thoughts on my first impression on a Canon PowerShot V10. So. I can't fault the camera fully for the quality of my shots because I used the wrong settings so it really messed up with the stability and all that but what I like about it the most is the sound quality. The built-in microphone in here is designed specifically for vlogging. If you want you can still plug in an external microphone if you like it has a jack for that but for me this has the best built-in microphone in any of my cameras that I have and when I look through the Canon website they did design the microphone specifically for vlogging so you'd want really need an external microphone so I think that one is like the best thing about this second is the picture quality I do like the picture quality of this it does capture a lot of light even in dark settings even without a ring light 
there were some footage that was like a little bit grainy and maybe not focused for me but but again i don't think i can fully fault the camera for that i need more practice with it because what's happening when i was out vlogging is i would accidentally touch the camera so it would go to the settings and mess up with the settings so i think that's what happened with some of the shots because like one thing that I don't like about this camera is the touch screen is very sensitive. So even if you're not recording with it, if you just accidentally touch it and the power is still on, it would just like do its own thing, either like hit record or like go to settings and then change up the settings. So that's something that I really have to be more conscious and like have a little bit more practice on when using this camera to be diligent with turning it off and just making sure not touching or changing the settings of this camera. And the second thing that I don't like about it is the lens does get dirty a lot. So it's good to have a microfiber cloth with you to wipe the lens before you hit record just because it's exposed. And I'm always like scared of scratching it. So even though I could fit it easily in my purse, I kind of wish that it came with a pouch, not just the flimsy white pouch that it came in when it's in the box, but just something that I could put the camera in. So I'm not too worried about the lens getting scratched up. But as far as picture quality, when the settings is right, the picture quality is absolutely amazing. So it's just making sure that you have the right settings so that the autofocus works properly and the picture quality is at its best. As far as stability, you can see it was really shaky. Again, maybe I just need a little bit more practice with it because is a new vlogging camera, but I kind of wish the stability was a lot better. Like I feel like iPhones have better stability than most cameras nowadays. So I kind of like wish for that kind of stability, but this one is still far too shaky for me. But again, I might just need practice and just making sure I have the right settings on my camera. And as far as battery life, I'm not really sure because again, I had the wrong video settings. So the camera was using up a lot more battery and it was like heating up pretty quickly. But I was out and about for like three or four hours. And by the time it started blinking the red light, I was already at Starbucks, already like ready to end my vlog. So I probably used it for a good four hours on and off. So I don't think that's bad it's the same battery life as a canon m50 but the only problem with that is the battery is built in so it's not a battery that i could take out and replace so if i'm traveling and i ran out of battery i have to charge the camera and i cannot use the camera while it's charging it does charge up pretty fast so maybe if i hook it up to a power bank it would charge up and then i could use it again but if i'm like traveling the whole day i want to use this to vlog all the time I probably can't do it because I can't just switch out the batteries because it is a built-in battery. I think that's my initial thoughts on the Canon PowerShot V10. I'm gonna still test it further. I have an upcoming trip to Disneyland that I'll be taking this with me and shoot my vlog with. And I'm also trying to shoot content with it for like short form videos because this is also great for short form videos when I'm shooting vertical videos because it is wide angle so it covers more when I'm recording compared to like using my smartphone or even my G7X and Canon M50 and it's just easier to like transfer data from here to my phone or to my computer or iPad. And I feel like the problems that I have with it could be solved if I just practice a little bit more and making sure I have the right settings on the camera when I'm vlogging. The one thing that's probably gonna be a downside for a lot of people is the battery because the battery life is no better than a battery life of a G7X, but at least with a G7X, you could interchange battery packs. With this one, you can't, you do have to like charge it. So if you're bringing this traveling, you want to make sure that you have a backup camera just in case you shoot with something else while it is charging. But it is inconvenient when you're traveling or out and about, the battery dies and you can't use it anymore because you have to plug it in to charge it. And as the manual said, you can't use it while it is charging. So there's that. So if you're interested in getting the Canon PowerShot V10, I would have it linked down in the description. I don't think it's going to be an affiliate link because this is not a sponsored video. This is not gifted. Well, I gifted this to me. I bought it with my own money. So, but if you're interested in a new vlogging camera and you want something that's a little bit more budget friendly, a little bit better than your smartphone, or you just don't want to keep using your smartphone to vlog and shoot your content, but you want something that is like lighter weight and less expensive, 
than a DSLR, I highly recommend getting the Canon PowerShot V10. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out those videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.